Hi, Whitney. It's Allison from the Dead Weather. Allison, what is going on? Hey, not much. I'm kind of bummed because I had I, I had heard that you had never done a radio interview before, so I was kind of excited that I was going to pop your cherry, but apparently what? it's too late. Yeah, I've done them before. Uh, the, I told you that. Dave Ravikoff. If you Liar. Know, I know. <laughs> um, now, do you read your interviews? Do you pick them apart? I can't stand the sound of my own voice, so I don't like to listen to them. And uh, I can never watch myself on YouTube or anything. That drives me crazy, too. <laughs> I find it really difficult. I don't know. It, I just feel like, oh, no, it kind of brings me down. I don't know why. I, feel, I always think I look really silly. I always think that, uh, especially like in print interviews, tones don't translate. They know? don't translate. You know, and I think there are some people with a real talent for it where, yeah. you know, you read their interviews and you're like, man, they, they kind of worked that out. I don't know. I haven't taken the time to work it out yet. Maybe I should. Yeah. No, I was very impressed with uh, your spin interview. I was like, oh, my gosh, she sounds so cool. They're making her sound really? so cool. <laughs> I haven't read it yet. <laughs> now, let me ask you this. How does one go from the armpit that is Florida, no offense, I know it is your hometown. Fine. It's fine to say. To, okay. to the U.K. and to not only that, to be successful in the U.K. Well, you know, I was in a band before. I was in the Kills. I was in a band called Discount. Um, right. And when I was like 14 um, until I was almost 20. And so I toured tons the whole time, and I was in England a lot. Now, when Jack called you, and, you know, in the interview, kind of your perspective on it was just like, f*** it, Jamie's on vacation, I don't really care, and let's do this. But is, yeah. there, is there a little more to it? I mean, I know you musicians. I know you're moody mother. I know, <laughs> and I'm like, I, you know, it, it, there had was it weird? I know that there's a there's a loyalty, there's an alliance. You know? There is. It's like a relationship. Totally. You feel like you're cheating on your partner. I mean, you know, Jamie and I had a long talk about about all this kind of stuff because we sort of both do other things, you know. But mm -hmm. primarily, we are there for each other 24 seven, and um, that is the relationship, you know. Um, it has been for the last 12 years, really. I mean, we've known each other for that long, so it's kind of like an old married couple that is a band. <laughs> it's really, really <laughs> odd. Um, so that all that comes with it. But, you know, we're on really good terms, and this is great. And it's, I think one thing inspires another thing inspires another thing. And um, I think the more music you do, the more positive it is. And, and I'm taking so much from this and learning so many things doing the Dead Weather it cannot be a negative experience. You know, um, I was talking to a buddy of mine, and he is kind of like, whereas I am pushing you guys, and I've been talking about dead weather a lot on air, he's like, I just don't understand all the side projects. Like, I don't get it. And I'm just like, what do you care? Like, it's just progressive <laughs> music. Are, was it ever a thought in your mind that was like, eh, I wonder if this, this, is, this is the side project that is going to jump the shark? Well, I mean, I don't know. I don't think, I never think about things as side projects you know you kind of bands are like children you kind of make them and care about them a great deal and, and and you don't i mean i don't believe in kind of anything being a throwaway thing and i think that word sounds a bit throwaway but is it, is you know it's kind of like foster care it's like yeah <laughs> I, yeah i don't like i don't like it i mean i don't know what we are i just think we're a band you know right it's kind of funny because you can sit in a room with all sorts of different people and try to play music and make a record and it doesn't work like this worked you know it was it was a really natural kind of super exciting really inspired three weeks that we spent in the studio where we we kept looking at each other going like what is going on this is amazing that we're writing a song a day you know and it's great and we we loved it so that that doesn't happen very often i don't think does it it sounds like you have uh more of like a brother sister relationship with jack ish it sounds like it's it's kind of rubbing off that where at least that's the way it was interpreted to me um mm. was there any level of you know everybody you talk to is is you know he's a genius in my mind i know i know uh, van leer rose i of course know all the white stripes albums it would be yeah. If you know, if Jack called me and was like, "Hey, I want you to be involved in some part," it would be I'd be all about it. I'd just be a little intimidated. Was there any level of that for you, or no, not nothing? Um, I don't know. Intimidated? I don't know if I was intimidated. I would because I've known Jack since maybe two thousand and two, mm -hmm. two thousand and three. We've been friends, so um, in that kind of weird way, I wasn't intimidated because I know him so well. Right. But but working with him, I think that's the really exciting part of it because. His bands are some of my favorite bands, you know, and yeah. he is one of my favorite performers of all time, especially on stage. I mean, I think he's incredible. So it's a lot to live up to for me and like almost the perfect kind of challenge in my mind. If I can 
I can be on stage and sing in front of Jack, who I, you know, could sit and watch for months and months on end and never get tired of. I think I'm doing something incredible that I didn't know I could do. And, and I think that's kind of what makes me do it. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. You know, it's that it's um, it's almost the uh, it's almost like counterphobia. It's like you're scared of it, but you do it anyway because you want to do it. Yeah, I do that with everything. <laughs> with everything. I think it's great. But everyone kind of looks at me like, what the f- what are you doing? You got to do it. You got to do yeah, it. Yeah. I think that's great. Gotta try it. Got to follow my ass. Got to keep trying it. Got to try everything. Yeah. Hell yeah, sister. Absolutely. Now, I um also I was uh, uh glancing through the new L, which is totally not my magazine. I'm, a, I'm usually a Music magazine. It's your magazine. But, but I, I really am not. Like, I don't like chick magazines. But Gwen Stefani is one of my girls, and she was on the cover, and I, and I was, like, all about music, so I had to pick it up. And, and you know, and I knew that you and I were going to chat, and I was like, holy crap, most promising front woman, Allison Mosshart. You're kidding. No. Really? It, it's, go get this issue. Gwen's on the well, front. Well, Oh, okay. All right. Okay. I'll get it. I'll get it. I didn't know that. It says it's Indies Rock Girls, new, newly minted it girl, and the only one to send Jack White to the back of the stage. Oh, my God. And it goes wow. on and on. It's an amazing compliment, but I just didn't know if you listen to that, if you take that kind of stuff, or you're just like, Well, uh, you know what? I've been, you know, I've been in abandoned touring since I was 14, and I'm 30 now, so no. You yeah. know what I mean? It's not going to really affect anything, because I'm definitely in this for the long haul, and... That's great. You know, it's cool, though. It's great to be appreciated. Absolutely. Um, now, I was uh, checking out the Kills MySpace page, and I meant to pick up your album over the weekend, but I figured I would just ask you, which Kills album should I start with? Oh, you should start with the first one, then. You really think so? I mean, it's that... You yeah, know? I love the first one. I love it, and, and the, so many people do. That was just... It means so much to me, that record. That was the beginning of, of everything in my head, so... I love that record, and then I, yeah, I just work your way through them. If you like that one, get the second one, and then the third one we wrote two, oh, like a year and a half ago, two years ago, which done. I really love as well. Done, done. I was actually, you know, one of those things where it's like, uh, you know, you kind of want to know, I, I want to educate myself a little bit on you, so I'm not one of those jackasses that's just like, <laughs> oh, oh, I don't know nothing about you. But I was, I was really digging it, and I was like, my God, this is just right up my alley. This is perfect. So I figured. Oh, cool. And finally. Finally, um, I have to give you props for doing scotch. I just, that's the one shot that I can't do. I can't do. Really? Yeah. I, I, like, do you want to recommend one? I mean, like, look, if we're, if, we're, if we're hanging out with all the guys and it's like, hey, here comes the bottle of scotch, you know I'm going to man up and do it. I just, it sounds like you like it, and I and I want to like it, so... What well, you know, it's with? kind of better, it's better, I wouldn't do shots of it, that's just kind of, you know, it, it tastes really good, so you should drink it slowly, well, like just on ice or something. Okay, all right. And kind of the more expensive the scotch, the better, and the no hangover, get, get something <laughs> nice. You only need two, and I think you're good to go, really. It's going to be my new drink, just because of <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what? I'm always drinking scotch, just hanging out, with that drinking some scotch. So, um, incredibly stoked for the new album, Whorehound, which it's July July 13th, and we will see you at the 930 Club on Tuesday night. Okay. I cannot wait. Thank you so much.